Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to our session again. Today, we continue our discussion on multiple linear regression. Uh, so far, we have uh, reached up to importing a data set, but let's just have a quick review of what we have discussed so far. So we said that multiple linear regression <clears throat> is a uh, statistical model where we attempt to, or we try, or we, uh, we explain a particular variable of interest, which we call our dependent variable or uh, or explained variable, okay? Our explained variable, which is, we usually denote it by Y, and it's equal to this equation. So you have here several uh, predictors, several explanatory variables, X1, X2, X3, X4, up to Xn, depending on the <clears throat> model. Okay, and then we have here epsilon. Okay, let me, I think, uh, kindly put here epsilon underscore i <clears throat> here. Epsilon underscore i. Okay, that will uh, put the subscript for i. Okay, so taking a look at this equation, your y is a function of these variables. <clears throat> x sub 1 up to x sub n, where your x's are all your explanatory or de independent variables. Your y is your dependent or response variable or outcome variable. There are many ways to call your dependent and independent variables. Okay. So uh, sub i here means this is the ith observation. So if there were, let's say, 100 observations, 100 data points, then you have y sub 1, y sub 2, up to y sub 100. Okay, each particular observ observation will have their own uh, specific <clears throat> values for their x, x's. Okay? Here in the model, beta null is your y-intercept, which is the average value for y sub i if the x's are all zeros. Okay, we'll discuss it in greater detail later on. Betas are your slope coefficients. They are the marginal effect of your independent variable on your dependent variable, assuming your excess, your other excess remain constant. <clears throat> and epsilon sub i is your error term, also your residual. Okay, so this is the multiple linear regression. And we said that there are certain assumptions that we need to consider. Okay. By the way, this the writing here is called your LaTeX, and it's it's a good good skill to <clears throat> to have class uh, to have uh, knowledge about LaTeX. So that's especially in math or in econometric subjects like this. LaTeX is very important because you can write this way, and then it will generate a uh, text that's that's highly uh, <clears throat> acceptable as far as math or econometrics is concerned. Okay, so you can see this one, and it's very clear. That's the representation, uh, uh, equational representation of a model on multiple linear regression. Okay, and then we said, uh, by the way, it's called late tech. It's not called late text because X here is actually uh, the uh, uh, letter chi. Uh, chi in uh, in Greek, no? <clears throat> so that's the same as technology. Okay, you don't you don't pronounce it as technology. It's technology. So this is pronounced as latex. Okay, if you were wondering why it's called, it's pronounced as latex and not latex. All right. So there are certain assumptions that we need to uh, know as far as re multiple linear regression is concerned. Number one, linearity of the data. So quick review. What do we mean by linearity of the data? The, the relationship between your dependent variable and independent variable. Okay, so let's show that. Okay, the, the relationship between them should be linear. So if this is your variable y, your dependent variable, this is your x, your independent variable. If we plot them, they should have this kind of a relationship. Okay. So this is more linear. <clears throat> so we can we can establish a model here. Sorry for the uh, drawing; it's not straight, which is linear, uh, and compare that with a relationship that's more 
quadratic or more okay take a look at this if this was the relationship then you find <clears throat> that this is not not at all linear okay it means that if you if you plot your data y and x and if they behave this way if the relationship is this way <clears throat> a linear multiple linear regression model will not will not suffice it will not fit okay so plotting the relationship between your y and x it should it should cons constitute a linear relationship okay so also let me clear the drawings another important assumption is that the parameters should be linear linearity of the parameters and we denoted it by this one so this model beta null plus beta 1 squared okay <clears throat> <laughs> this this will not work in a multiple linear regression model. Okay, there will be difficulty as far as computing for the beta one is concerned. However, it's okay <clears throat> if the variables are the ones that are not linear. That's okay. So beta null plus beta one x squared, <clears throat> or we have uh, let's see beta two. We can put here log. Sorry. Okay. You can see this one log of x i two. <clears throat> so log uh, x i two x is log x two is log. Okay, that's okay. Uh, for as long as it's not <clears throat> it's not the parameter beta two that's uh, that's log or squared or got the square root or one over beta one. Which make them non, not linear, so hindi pa pwede yung models na ganito, no? Square root of beta, say beta one, or log of beta one. Sometimes there you you could do transformations, no? okay? But generally, these are not allowed. Or beta one squared, okay? Or one over beta. They're not okay. But it's okay to get the square root of x or to get the log of x or x squared or 1 over x. <clears throat> they are perfectly fine. But not, not the parameters themselves. Okay, let me pause for a while. Is there any question with that? Clear yung class? Clear yung distinction ato ha? Hindi pa pwede to. Pa pwede to. Okay? Could you kindly chat please if that's clear? <clears throat> feedback please class if that uh, if those assumptions are clear okay all right how about the others okay thank you okay good all right good then we have we have also assumptions about the residuals now this this is very important and yeah, that's why we will spend some time looking at our model and do some what we call diagnosis. Okay, sorry for the handwriting. It's so difficult to write with the mouse. Residuals. So after we have after we have uh, come up with a model, and by the way, what method is used to generate the model for for multiple linear regression? The model is called OLS. Okay, OLS. And what does OLS mean? Anyone, please? What's the meaning of OLS? Anyone? What does OLS mean? OLS is the model used in order to determine the parameters for a linear regression or a multiple linear regression. Okay, thank you. I'm sure you have met this term before. It's ordinary least squares, okay? Ordinary list. Okay, why list? And why squares? What's what's being considered as list? Anyone? What did you learn in your previous subject? Basic knowledge to class, no? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> if you don't know this yet, before this session ends, dapat alam na natin to, no? 
<laughs> and then please don't forget that. So kapag it's, if it's multiple linear regression, the method that's oftentimes used is ordinary least squares. Of course, there are other methods. We will ex try to explore them in this subject. But OLS is the go-to model. And why is it called OLS? Why ordinary least squares? What's the least here? What are we looking at? Least what? Anyone? Least? Ordinary least squares. Least what? Okay. Okay, uh, I hope class you're not not why you stock knowledge. Please don't uh, copy from the internet. No? Uh, I just want to know what 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 you know about this. So, you mga next questions, please do not uh, open the internet and search. Kasi gusto natin malaman yung base knowledge. No? Okay, list. Why list class? Why list? Has it something to do with the residuals? How did we define residuals last time, class? Can somebody please? Okay, without looking at the internet, please. Can somebody tell me? <clears throat> how do we compute for the residuals? Kasi ito, sabi natin, may mga assumptions tong ano, tong OLS, di ba? May assumptions tong model natin. Let's take a look at them. Sabi dito, your residuals should be heteroskedastic, no? Ibig sabihin, constant yung, yung variance. Okay, thank you, Emil. Constant variance. Uh, how does a constant variance look like? If we plot your residuals, okay, so let's suppose this is your X, and here is your residuals, epsilon, okay? Across the values of X, okay? So these are the points. Sorry for the drawing. You know, the, you can see that the the uh, the variability, the range of the values of your epsilon remain constant. It does not go this way, okay, which we call a finding out of your residuals. Neither does it go this way. Neither does it go this way. So hindi siya, diba? Okay. It does not go this way, diba? Hindi siya over across the values of x, it does not go, it does not become smaller. Neither does it become bigger across the values of x. So that's what we mean by constant variance. Okay, but uh, let me go back to what, what what I was asking a while ago. Now, back at your least squares. Why are we calling it least squares? Okay, may I know, class, <clears throat> what is the value? Uh, if we get the average of your residuals, what do we get? Okay, again, stop knowledge, please. No? What's the value of the average of your residuals? So, uh, in the uh, data that we imported last time, there were 126 ob observations. So there will be 526 residuals. Okay. So, yeah, Jared, my, my question is, what will be the average values of your error terms of your residuals? So these are residuals, right? These ones. These ones are residuals. If you add all the residuals and get the average, uh, sorry, if you add all the residuals, sorry, not the average, but if you sum up all the residuals, what do you get? Okay, so this is these are your residuals. Sum, of, sum them up. What are you going to get? I ranging from 1 <clears throat> up to N number of observations that we have. 
what will be the value of the sum of all your residuals, class? It will be equal to, anyone? Equal to, okay, this will be equal to zero. Okay. If you get all the residuals and then sum them up, the answer will be zero. That's why in OLS, ordinary least squares, we do not get the residuals. Okay, we do not base our the decision based on the residuals because their sum will be equal to zero. However, when we square this, okay, instead of getting the sum of the residuals, we square, we get the sum of the squared residuals. Okay, then definitely this will not be zero because some residuals will be negative, some will be positive, and those that will be negative, they will be squared, then they will be converted into positive values. So we will have a value for this one. So the sum of the residuals themselves is equal to zero. But the sum of the residuals squared is not equal to zero. And OLS seeks to find a model for your betas, for your parameters, where your the sum of the residuals are minimized. Okay? So it's the minimum. That's why it's called least. Least squares. Okay? This is the square. Okay, in other words, if you have this model, for example, if you have this model, this is your actual value, okay, and this is your <clears throat> this is your predicted value, this is your regression line. So the difference between your predicted value and your actual value, this is your error or epsilon. That's your error. And what we do is that we square this. So we get the square of that. And for example, this is another uh, actual value. We get the residual, and then we square that. And then maybe this one, small residual, and then we square it again. So you get this, the squares. You get at e squared, e squared, e squared, and then you sum them up <clears throat> so that you have now your uh, what we call your OLS, ordinary least squares, that will give us the betas that, that will give the minimum squared residuals. And the OLS will always yield a, a, a model, uh, model value for your parameters, beta null, beta one, et cetera, which will always, which will give us the lowest squared residuals, the sum of the squared residuals. Residuals, and there's no other model that can <clears throat> that can have the a lower uh, squared residuals. Okay, the OLS will always give the lowest squared residuals. If you try to come up with another model, for example, you you have a different beta null, beta one, beta two, etc. The squared residuals will be higher than the OLS. The OLS. Will, own, will be the one with the least squared residuals. Okay? So let me pause for a while and ask you if uh, that's clear, the concept of OLS, ordinary least squares, and how it is done. Could you please chat? So hopefully, if you have not, if you have not mastered that concept, I hope now, clear sa atin yan, no? Okay, how about the others? <clears throat> let me wait for the others to give their confirmation if the if this is clear, OLS, ordinary least, L-E-A-S-T, pinakamaliit, squares. <clears throat> the squares there is the residuals squared. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so let's go back to the assumptions. Ang assumption natin dapat, yung residuals dapat homoskedastic siya. Okay, they should be homoskedastic. Another one, the residuals should be independent of each other. When you say independent of each other, the residuals should behave in such a way that there is no uh, serial correlation. What do you mean by that? It should not... Okay, let me again <clears throat> show that. Kasi pag, if there's a, if there's independence of the residuals, how will your residuals look like? If you plot them, okay, they will behave in a certain pattern. Kunyari, may trend. If the residuals have a trend like this, then 
it will violate this. Hindi sila independent. Okay, kasi ano eh, the, the, the values, kunyari, this value is dependent on this value. Or this value is dependent on this value. No? Unlike if it's independent, wala, ito yung bubbly tayo dun sa constant mean and constant uh, constant mean and constant variance there. No? And random siya. No dip, no no in no dependence. And lastly, also the residual should be normally distributed, which is a let's say soft requirement. So in as regards the residuals, dapat constant mean, constant variance. Second, independent dapat sila. Third, dapat normally distributed <coughs> yung residuals. Okay? And then an, another requirement is that what's another requirement? The Okay, the independent variables, this one, should not be collinear. Okay, there, there should be no multi-collinearity or perfect collinearity. Okay, as we said last time, if the variables are collinear, or if they're perfectly collinear, then why, why, use, why use both variables? Okay, there's no point in using both variables if, let's suppose, x1, okay, let me again annotate, <clears throat> Let's suppose x1 is, let's say, 3, 7, 2, 5, etc. Okay? And x2 is, let's say, 5, 13, 3, 9. Okay? So we can see here that x2 is derived by multiplying the, the x1 by 2 and then subtracting 1. So 3 times 2 minus 1, 5, 7 times 2 minus 1, 13, etc. So x2 is just a per function of x1. You can derive x2 from x1. In this case, this is what we call perfect collinearity. Okay? Perfect collinearity. If you plot, if you plot x1 and x2, it will be a perfect line. Perfect line. Yan. Okay? It will be a perfect line if you plot x1 and x2. So we don't want a scenario like this because okay, x2 or x1 will become redundant because they're explaining the same thing. Okay, that's what we mean by <clears throat> multicollinearity. Or it may not be that perfect. Hmm? It might not be perfect collinearity, but they have a strong collinearity. Okay? Now we want y and x to be highly correlated, but we don't want the x's to be highly correlated. Okay, so please uh, think of, please uh, bear in mind the distinction between uh, we want y, the dependent variable, to be highly correlated with, with x. That's very good because that means that x can explain y. But we don't want the independent variables to be correlated with each other. <clears throat> okay, all right, so we took a look at this, uh, at this assumptions of classical linear regression model. I gave you some references. I hope you uh, looked at them. Okay, so we now go to an example of, uh, we will start start first with a simple linear regression, okay, but we will not delve so much into simple linear regression. Just go through the uh, process and learn as much as possible from it because uh, from there we will, we will migrate to a multiple linear regression. So the packages that we will be needing is uh, from site, base text, or less, Stargazer. Okay, so we learned how to uh, uh, load Pacman. Pacman is a very good uh, package for uh, packages. All right. Okay, Pacman. I've loaded that and then I'm using okay, it's also from Pacman, although I don't need to write that. Package load. Uh, L O. Okay, then package load, and then I'll just copy this. So see, what's good about the Pacman package is that you don't, don't need to put quotations there, okay? And if you don't have this package, these, these packages, it will automatically install it and then load it. So automatic with just one line of code. All right, so I hope you have loaded the packages. Okay. 
clear all drawings. Okay. All right. And then we can check. We can check if these packages are already available. Okay. I, I won't do that anymore. You know. How to... Okay. So uh, one good thing about working with a, in, in projects is that you can you can load the file that you you're going to use in that folder, and then automatically you can you can load that data set in the uh, in the R, R markdown file you're using. So control alt I. Now there are several ways we can load a particular file. Okay, for example, we can make use of uh, the sun parang angle ko ng computer ko is good. Directly umaano yung araw. All right. So, uh, a very good uh, a very good function is either read that CSV or read underscore CSV. So let's just uh, quickly take a look at the difference. Read that CSV. Okay, let me just put it here in the. Okay, dito na lang. Okay. In your case class, pwede niyo ilagay yung mga functions. You don't if you don't want to put it in a. Uh, in a uh, code chunk, you can put it here in the source code pa rin. No? Para, kasi dito, pag nasa console yan, madidelete yan. At least dito, pag na-save nyo, nandito pa rin yung, ano, yung code, uh, yung function. Okay, so here, okay, so read that CSV is from the utils, utils package. Huh? So, uh, ang ano niya, reads a file in a table format and creates a data frame from it. Okay, so ito yung lumang ano lumang functions. Read that CSV. And tinan pa ang code, no? Header is equal to true. Like, I'll copy this. Meron pang CSV2, no? Uh, CSV2, semicolon naman yung separator niya. No? <clears throat> okay? So, uh, meron din read that delim. Okay, so let me just copy this. Because we can use this. Okay, however, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the uh, uh, the more the newer version, which comes from uh, uh, it comes from read our package. So let me again right here read underscore csd. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here read. So this is coming from the read our package, and it's made available when. Okay, by the way, did we write here? In tidyverse. Okay, in the, ano? So maybe we can include here tidyverse. Because remember, in tidyverse package cons consists of several packages. And then see ggplot2, and then see dplyr, and then see readr, tidyr, and dami. No? And dami. So let me just uh, run ko ulit tong load. Just lang naman yan. Okay, so kasami na si tidyverse dito. So I'll be included in the function. Okay, all right. So if I look at this, ito yung read underscore the lim, and then ito read underscore csv. Okay, so there's a difference now between yung read that csv as compared to read underscore csv. So dito sa read that csv, ang function natin dito header is equal to true. Dito column names, no? Column names is equal to true. Then we can <clears throat> write here the column type. Okay. Which means that if you have uh, several columns, you can identify kung anong type siya, kung numeric ba siya, or character, etc. So this is a lot more, see, a lot more quote-unquote powerful, okay? So we're just going to use this, guro. Uh, tapos dito yung sep separator, no? Dito kasi sa read.csd, we identify ko ano yung separator, comma. Dito, hindi na kailangan kasi dito read. Sinabi na naman natin ng comma separated file. Ko. All right So, let me just copy this. Okay, kahit, kahit hanggang column names lang. Control C. And let me put that here. Okay, Control V. All right Then, I'm going to create this object wage out minus. <clears throat> 
Okay, so what do we have here? We have here yung wage. Uh, we're creating this object wage. And then read underscore CSV. And then here, ano yung file? Okay, since we're working in a project, tapos yung mga files na are readily available sa project na to is are here. No? So we can just identify wage.csv. Okay. If it was not here, class, for example, you were not working with a project, okay, so kailangan i-identify mo yung file location na. Nasa anong location? Nasa C ba yan? Tapos yung usual na, uh, ayaw pa naman ni R ng, ano, ng backwards slash. Gusto nila forward slash. So mas, mas mat matrabaho, class, kung if you're going to uh, load a particular file from another folder, kasi yung file address on file location yun, isasama mo lahat, no? Ito, wala. Wala ng file location. Wait, that's CSV. Diretso na. Kasi, alam na ni ano. Okay, let, before we run this, tignan natin ha. Uh, let's first see, ano ba yung bagay ko na lang dito. Get working directory. Okay, so get working directory. Sabihin dito, yan. Okay, so in my case, it's from my C, users. Tapos sa desktop ko, diba, nag-create ako ng folder yung our projects, Finch SARK32. And under that is my directory ng multiple linear regression. So, andi dito siya. No? Andi dito yung working directory. Automatic yung class. When I open a when I open a project, automatic. Kung asan yung project na yun, dun niya, yun ang working directory natin. Okay? So, it, it makes it really very uh, very easy to navigate through uh, yung project folder natin. Okay, so this one will now work, no? Okay, so let, let me run this. Okay, so now it tells me that meron siyang, meron siyang initial uh, uh, preliminary information. There are 526 columns, 8 column specification, and delimiter natin, comma. Okay, so there are 3 variables that are character and 5 variables that are double. You, you will not see this in, in the read.csv. Dito, may mga preliminary information ka agad. Okay, may, inspect, may instructions pa. Use spec to retrieve the full column specification. Okay, we can do that. So, okay, pakita natin. Ha. Uh, kanina dito, nasa ano tayo? No? Help, ano? Help. So. Okay, we can do that. If you want to know, uh, so, asan yung spec dito? Specification. <clears throat> okay, and sabi niya, show column types. So, pwedeng show column types. So, column types is equal to ito. So, we can, we can show this. Okay, let me see. Hindi ko kabisado itong yung other ano eh. Pero ilalagay natin, comma, control D. Alright. <clears throat> Show column types. Uh, I don't know if pwedeng true to. No? Pagay nga natin true. Let's see. T. And then open. One, two, sobra. Okay. So dito, sinama natin show column types is equal to true. Tignan natin kung pwede ito. No? All right. Uh, Saan na siya? Hindi, no? Control Z. Okay. How about ito? Should show column, show, should show types? I run this. Okay, hindi pa rin. Ha. Dapat, dapat sasabihin niya kung ano yung, ano yung column types. <clears throat> okay. Uh, right. Andali ah. Ito na lang. Column types. Let's see. Column types. Dapat column types is equal to null. Column types is equal to let me try this. Pero dapat tayo maglalagay nito eh. Control D. Now, let me see if this is true. 
Okay, let's check this class. Kama, kama, say kama, no? Hindi, mali. Dapat, ano, dapat string siya. Uh, ito, uh, I used this before, pero uh, it's when you want to define already your columns. Yung wage kasi natin, may tatlong characters, tapos may limang numeric. If you want to change, if you want to define already, kunyaring characters, gusto natin gawing factor yun, then we can use this. No? Okay, but let's not, let's not uh, bother ourselves with that now, at the moment. So let's just uh, maintain yung, yung initial na simple na data set natin. And then let's view this. Okay, examine na data natin. Punta tayo dito. Ah. Control, Alt, I. Dito na tayo maglagay ng uh, view. View wage. Let's take a look at our wage data set. Okay, then we have, <clears throat> we have uh, eight variables. 526 observations all in all. Okay, I was saying a while ago, ito yung y sub 1 natin. Ito yung y sub 2. So all in all, there are y 526 observations. And then there are 8 uh, x's. x1, x2, x3, hanggang x8. So ito yung, yung structure ng data natin. Okay, if we get the, let's get the structure of this, str wage. Okay, we can see that this is a data frame, no? a special table in fact. It's a data frame and then we can see here the different variables, education, numeric, race, is character. Okay, although we know that it's better for race and gender and civil status to be a factor because we can use them as classifiers, no? white and non-white, gender, etc. Because when we get the summary, ang kagandahan class kapag factor siya, Pag sinamarize natin, bibigay sa atin yung count. Summary ng wage, it will not give us the count per per type kasi character siya, hindi siya factor. So binilang lang kung ilan, yung race, yung gender, at saka yung, uh, yung civil status. Okay. All right. Any questions so far, class? Post mo na ako. Any questions? Chat, please, if clear time so far. Okay, six lang yung nag-respond. Okay, parang kulang tong file na to. Okay, so first, before we, we even perform uh, regression, let's, let's try to plot our data. Okay, ang pinaka basic natin na plotting is I think I think tambigay ko sino to, no? Use the plot function. Now what will happen if uh if plot, plot natin sa x axis yung education, okay? And then sa y axis yung hourly wage. And then data natin is equal to wage. No, 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 no. Or, no, let's, uh, I think I gave you a title main is equal to, uh, ano ba main natin? Uh, let's see, scatter plot. Scatter plot of hardy wage and education. Okay, if we try to run this, the same function natin, the plot function comes from base R. Okay. 
So, ang ilalagay mo natin dito, tinan nyo, plot x, kung ano yung nasa x, tapos yung y. Tapos dito, naglagay lang tayo ng type. If I run this, it will generate an error term, y class. Ano kalagay, no? Object education not found. If you take a look at our uh, environment, walang education at saka walang early wage dito. No? no such objects. And we know why. Bakit, class? Kasi... Kasi these objects come from the wage data set. Ba hindi na recognize to ni ano ni R unless we we use the function attach. Naalala niyo 'yan, 'di ba? Pag linagay natin attach wage, then we read to. Okay, but let's let's not do that. Let's what we do now is copy natin to. Control C Control V and then let's identify kung saan galing ano to kung saan galing na object. No? Wage education, wage, <clears throat> early wage, and then let's, uh, lagyan natin ng, ano, ng labels. No? Let's put X label. X label is uh, years of education. And then let's put a Y label. Y, y label is early wage. Tama. And the main main plot will have a name scatter plot of early wage and education. Okay, so let's run this. And we can see now that uh, run natin, control, enter. Nagran na siya. We now have the plot for uh, on the x axis is your years of education, on the y axis is your early wage. <clears throat> okay, we can see here that. Uh, is there a linear relationship between them? Hard to tell, no? Pero we can get the correlation of this later on. Pero makikita natin na... Okay, sige, kunin natin yan. Uh, because we want, di ba sabi natin, we want that the X and the Y, X and Y should have control out I. Let's get the core. Core new wage. Okay. Educ. And then wage... Uh, early wage. Okay, so let's let's get the correlation of wage and early wage, <clears throat> and you can see it's 0.4. Okay, so there's there seems to be a, uh, a relatively uh, 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 di moderate no moderate na correlation between education and early wage. Okay, so we don't we want of course the the, in this case, kasi gusto natin i-model si early wage or dependent variable uh, relative to education. We'd like to see if education uh, has a bearing or has a relationship with early wage. Okay, and we were able to find out that the correlation is 0.4 or 0.41 approximately. So not bad. There is indeed uh, some semblance of correlation. Okay, so now... Gagamitin natin ngayon, mag, magsisimple regression na tayo. And the function that we're going to use is ito, no? LM. Kung lang LM function, this comes from the stats package. Okay, so as I said before, the stats package comes preloaded with R. So we don't need to install this package. So sabi dito, LM is used to fit linear models, including multivariate ones. It can be used to carry out regression, Single stratum analysis of variance, ang COVA analysis of covariance. Okay, so pwedeng gamitin si LM. Okay, and here are the parameters here. Okay, so uh, we will not look into that. Okay, the practical example nila natin to. <clears throat> okay, so the function is this one, a basic function, LM. Then you have the formula, and then the data. Okay, so we will not bother ourselves with the others first. Let's just take a look at the most basic one. Formula and then data. Okay, and then uh, this one is for weights. If uh, it's what we call weighted least squares, but we're not going there. Okay, so control alt i let's generate this one. And if I use LM, so you identify first your y, your dependent variable. Our dependent variable is our RU wage, right? And then you use the tilde to denote that early wage 
okay, is being regressed on your x axis, your x variable, which is education, and then we identify the data is equal to wage. Okay, so no need to put here wage dollar early wage and wage dollar education because we are already <clears throat> we're already using uh, wage for that. Okay. In fact, class, in fact, if you recall, we can we can go here wage, right? If you recall this class, and then LM, okay? So, pwede kaya to, early wage, uh, and then field, and then edu. Let's just see if uh, if we can use the the uh, deep layer here. Okay, but let's run this first. So, here LM, early wage education, data is equal to wage. Let's run this. It will give us a result, this one. Okay, so it will give us first the formula call LM on formula natin early wage regress of education and then data is equal to wage. Okay, and then we have here the, in, the coefficients. The intercept is negative 0.9 and then the uh, parameter beta 1 education is 0.54. Okay, so kindly chat please if you were able to generate this. <clears throat> generate by yung coefficients. Waiting for the others. Feedback, please. Uh, don't run this first. No? Ito yung sa ano eh. Ito yung sa deplier, di ba? Ito yung and then, di ba? How about the others? Feedback, please. Were you able to run your LM, early wage, till the education, data is equal to wage? At least that. Yan, lang, yan muna. It should generate this, diba? Okay, good. <clears throat> All right. Then let's see. Will this work? Nyo, no? Okay? Hindi siya pa pwede, no? Kasi, di ba, wage natin, tapos, di ba, and then, LM, no? Okay, sabi dito, error in as that data frame default I cannot coerce class formula to a data frame. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to show that to you na hindi pa pwede yung ginamit natin, ginagamit natin yung deplier dito. There's a way to do that, but not this way. Okay, but that's not our interest now. Ang gusto natin malaman, itong model na to, itong simple linear regression. This is now your dependent variable, this is your independent variable, and this is your data. Okay, so ito yung syntax ng NLM, no? And then, uh, what we can do with this one is we want to understand ano yung, ano yung output na to. So let's create an object. Let's call it mod1. One. Model1. One. <clears throat> Alt minus. Okay, here I'm creating this object, mod1. And then it will be the output for this regression model. Okay, and as we know, this is a simple linear regression because we only have one predictor. All right, so let's run this. Okay, what happened? All right. Run na ba? Ayan. May mod 1 na ako. Hmm? And you should have this mod 1 also in your, in, in your environment. If I click this, notice that mod 1 is a list. So di ba ang list, it can contain, can contain vectors, it can contain list, it can contain matrices. It contains uh, different types of data, data types. So here we can see that uh, si mod 1, ito yung mga laman niya. No? May coefficient, may residuals, may effects, effect, may rank, etc. No? May fitted values. We're going to take a look at this one by one. Uh, not one by one, but uh, the uh, most important things here. All right. So uh, I, can, I can actually access kung ano yung laman niya ng mod 1 yan. Names, by this function, names, mod 1. 
So let's see what what's inside mod one. Ito yung list na tininda natin kanina, no? So inside mod one are coefficients, okay? And since mod one is a list, we can access these elements here. Okay, yung laman ng mod one na yan, pwede natin i-access to by by the by the uh, a function by the code mod one and then dollar. But before we go we go to that, let's first summarize. No? The summary function of mod one will give us the result. Okay. So take a look at this. The summary function gave us the result of the the summary of the model mod one. Okay. Kindly chat please if you were able to get this. So, na-generate ba natin? So, importante, importante yung summary function. No? Summary ng, ano, ng, ng model natin. Okay, waiting for the others to respond, please. Were you able to get this? Itong result ng summary yung mod 1 natin. So, that's why it's important to create an object for the LM output. No? Okay, waiting for the others. Summary mod 1 yung, yung code natin, yung function natin, ginamit natin. <clears throat> okay. A few more seconds for the others. Sana maka, maka, 20, maka 50 percent pa lang tayo ng ano, response rate from your end class. Wala pa tayong 50 percent. 40 percent pa lang yung nag-respond. Uh, which is not good no? for a discussion like this. Uh, linear regression model <clears throat> i would that more than 80 90 percent will respond so waiting for the others please to respond or nag tune out na ba kayo Right? Uh, ababa pa rin response rate, no? Okay, so tingnan natin yung output, no? yung, yung summary natin. Okay, first, first is the function. So, yung formula. Okay, so rinirecall yung formula. Our formula is early wage regressed on education. Take note, dapat ito yung dependent variable natin, ha? And this should be our independent variable. In this case, isa lang yung independent variable natin. But next meeting, titignan natin, marami tayong independent variables. No? So this makes it a case of a simple linear regression and then identify the data. Our data is equal to wage. And then here we can see the residuals. Yung pinakamaliit na residual at saka pinakamalaking residual. <clears throat> okay, minimum and maximum residuals, which seems to give us an idea that medyo parang hindi, ano, hindi normally distributed no? residuals natin. Kasi magkalayo yung minimum at saka yung <clears throat> maximum. No? Okay? Although the median is quite close to zero. Alright, then we have here the coefficients. Ito na yung ano natin, beta null, yung intercept natin, at saka beta 1, yung slope natin for education. Because this is our independent variable, okay? And this is your intercept. Okay, so how do we know, class, if our if our coefficients <clears throat> are significant or not? We base it here on the individual tests. No, it's an individual individual t test. Ang ginagamit dito t test. Okay. All right. So my hypothesis, to ano yung hypothesis nito? So as many coefficients as you have, those are the number of hypotheses. <clears throat> Kung dalawa yung coefficients natin, intercept and education, dalawa din yung hypothesis natin. For this one, ang hypothesis natin, H null 1 is that our beta null, the intercept natin is equal to 0. And then our second hypothesis is that H null 2. 
our beta one, which is for education, is equal to zero. Okay, so let's take a look. That ang tinitingnan, uh, you have to use the t t value, no? T table, and then you look at the computed t value. Okay, which is how was t value computed here? Anyone? Anyone? Can anyone tell me how uh, t was computed? If you recall your uh, elementary stuff, paano na compute yung t value, which we need in order to get the p value. Kasi dati via tables eh. So kailangan mo yung value ng t, tapos pupunta ka sa table, tapos hahanapin mo yung p value niyan. E ngayon kasi mga statistical software binibigay na to eh. So nowadays you don't actually need the t value anymore. Although sa mga journals, rinirequire pa rin na ibigay natin itong t value. Okay, so how do you compute for the t value class? It's your beta, okay, beta estimate B sub i okay, divided by what? Divided by your standard error. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so that's your t, your t stat. It's equal to your beta, which is this one, divided by standard error. <clears throat> Sige nga, yun natin. I Check lang natin. Control C, Control V, divided by standard error. Control C, <clears throat> Control V. Okay, negative 1.321, di ba? Ganun din dito sa ano. So, that's how you compute for the T value. And then from here, you'll be able to generate your P. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, to determine whether this particular uh, parameter, in this case intercept, intercept siya, if it's significant or not, we look at the p value. And the rule is, by way of reminder, by way of review na lang, I'll, I'm sure you know this already. Okay. The, the, sta the usual p, the level of significance is 0 0.05. Ito yung ginagamit. Level of significance. Depende, minsan it's 0.10, depende sa study. But in the absence of any uh, clarification, gagamitin natin 0 0.05. Okay, so this is the level of significance. And we compare that with the p-value. And the rule is, when the p is low, the null must go. Okay? When the p is low, lower than your level of significance, the null must go, which means we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so here, the p-value is 0.81187. And it's not lower compared to the level of significance. Okay? Therefore, ang conclusion natin, we fail. This cannot go. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that your intercept is statistically equal to zero. Kasi yung tinetest natin. Eh. Is beta null equal to zero? Is there a reason to believe that your intercept is equal to zero? And the answer is, we cannot reject this, this null hypothesis that beta null is equal to zero. There's statistical possibility that your intercept is equal to zero. On the other hand, itong education class, the value is 0.54. <clears throat> okay, it's 0.54 and the, the standard error is 0 0.05. The T value is 10.167. The P value is practically zero. Because it means... 2 times 10 to the negative 16. Ibig sabihin, uh, decimal place, then 2, and then, and then sorry, 0 muna, uh, decimal place, and then 15 zeros. Imagine 15 zeros, tapos 2. No? That's how your value looks like. So that's practically 0. And since the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then anong conclusion? When the p is low, the null must go. So we reject this. The null, this null must go. We reject the null hypothesis that your beta 1, which is your the intercept for education, is equal to 0. We reject that null hypothesis. So there, there's this strong reason to believe that your beta 1 is not 0. And in fact, the average value is 0. 0.54. Okay? All right. So let's first write the model 
Okay, I'm running out of time. Sulat natin yung model natin, no? Okay, uh, andali. Stop ko muna to. Clear ko. Alright, so what's our model class? Our model is now, we are, ibaw, our, lagyan natin ang equation. Early wage. Early wage, and then lagyan natin ang uh, is equal to <clears throat> okay uh, let's get this tignan natin kung ano ha <clears throat> let me see if this will work uh, mod 1 dollar hindi kailang yata nasa ano and not now not now no? so uh, i-copy ko na lang to control c control v and then plus uh, this one, control C, times Zook. Epsilon, Epsilon, and this one. Okay. So take a look at our model. Early wage is equal to negative 0 0.90485 plus 0 0.54136 times education plus your error term. Okay, let's take a look at this model. Now, why are we including the intercept? Diba hindi siya statistically significant? Diba sabi natin, uh, as, to the, uh, as to the hypothesis that, that beta null, which is your intercept, is equal to zero? We fail to reject that. Diba? So there's no reason to believe, there's statistical reason to believe that beta null uh, could be zero. Pero bakit pa rin natin siya sinasama dito sa model na to? Why did I choose to include the intercept here? Anyone? Bakit ko siya sinama? Si early wage. Okay, in the interest of time class, pasensya na, sasagutin ko na lang. No? When, when intercepts, uh, are not statistically significant. <clears throat> we nevertheless still include them in the model. Okay, so the practice is whether or not statistically significant intercept isama pa rin natin sa model. Okay? But that's not true, of course, when you have for your independent variable. Okay, so let's interpret this. Ano ibig sabihin ng intercept na to? Itong negative 0.90485. This is the value, the average value of your dependent variable. Okay? If all of your predictors are all equal to zero. In this case, is a predictor natin sa education. So we're saying that if education is equal to zero, kung zero years of education yung isang tao, then ang early wage niya, average, our average early wage niya is negative 0.91 approximately. <clears throat> Okay, of course, it does not have any practical meaning, practical significance. Bakit? Kasi wala, hindi naman pwedeng ano. Hindi naman pwedeng ang average early wage ng isang tao negative. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, siya pa yung magbabayad dun sa ano? Siya pa yung magbabayad dun sa company. And we know that this, statistically, this value is zero. But still, we're including that in the, in the model. <clears throat> okay, next. What about this? What's the meaning of point, point five? Five four one three six. Anyone? Can anyone explain what point fifty four is? Anyone? Okay, I'm point fifty four class. This is the marginal effect of education on a uh, marginal effect of a one one unit change in education. To the early wage. This is the slope of education. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, for every one unit change in education, okay, I'm using, uh, technically, it should be for every one year change in education. Kasi ang education ang dimension ng years. Huh? <clears throat> so, for every one year change in education, there's a 0.54 or 54 centavos or 0.54 dollars increase average increase in your early wage keteris paribus. So let me write that. For every 
one year. Year kasi ang education class in years. No? For one year, increase in education, there is a corresponding 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 dollar 0 0.54 increase in early wage and then Keteris Paribus. And let me explain what Keteris Paribus is. All right, notice that the slope here is positive. Okay, so if it's a positive slope, it means there's a positive relationship. Ano ibig sabihin ng positive relationship as far as correlation is concerned? Ang ibig sabihin ng positive relationship, when one increases, the other also increases. When one decreases, the other decreases. So just take note that a positive relationship does not mean na laging increase na lang. Pwede of course mag-decrease. What this means if, is if there's a positive relationship, the change, the direction in the change is the same. When one increases, the other increases. When one decreases, the other decreases. And that signifies a, if we can plot, if we can plot the slope. So if this is <clears throat> edu, <clears throat> education, if this is early wage, di ba kanina plinat natin to? Ganito yung direction ng <clears throat> correlation nila. No? Okay? Which is positive. In this case, it's positive 0 0.54. And 0 0.54 is the, ang tawag natin dito, marginal <clears throat> effect. No? Bakit marginal effect? Marginal means parang per unit. No? Marginal effect of education of uh, per unit change in education on early wage. So, ang reading natin dito, for every one year increase in education, <clears throat> there's a corresponding 54 centavos increase in early wage, keteris paribus. What's the meaning of keteris paribus? All things being the same. So, in other words, pag meron pa tayong ibang ano dito, predictors, okay, we will not let them increase. <clears throat> si education lang papa increase natin ng one. Okay, the rest will not increase. The rest will be status quo. No? Kasi pag nag-increase din yung iba, hindi na yun na magiging marginal effect sa early wage. Kasama na rin yung increases dun sa iba. No? So that's what I mean by that equation-wise. Okay, so I hope that's clear, class. For every one unit increase in education, and it so happens here that education's dimension is in years. So gagamitin natin yun. For every one year increase in education, there is a corresponding 0.54 uh, dollars or 54 centavo increase in early wage keteris paribus. Or for every one, one year decrease in education, there is a corresponding 0.54 dollars decrease in early wage keteris paribus. <clears throat> okay? And why are we including 0.54 here? Because educations is statistically significant. Diba? Ang p-value niya is practically practically less than zero. Kasi point zero, 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 15 zeros and then two. Imagine that. Point, then you write 15 zeros and then two. So that means uh, practically zero siya and it's less than point zero 0.05. So, pag ganun, remember, just a quick review, what happens? We reject the null hypothesis. Ano yung null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that beta 1 is equal to is equal to 0. We reject this. No? Okay? We reject this. <clears throat> Alright. Okay, any questions so far, class? <clears throat> Kindly chat, please. If we're okay so far. <clears throat> Waiting for the others to give their feedback. Tatlo lang, class. <clears throat> so feedback naman, please. I want to know if you're able to follow, if you have questions. Okay. Uh, ask questions, class. Okay, may hiya. No? Kasi importante, importante to. Notice I'm deliberate with my 
discussion kahit na alam ko na discussion natin sa iba no? okay um, may i have your feedback please ganito ba yung pagdiskusyon dun sa ano nyo sa uh, yung mga basic stat nyo sa ano is it the same same level ng ano ng discussion natin okay angel yeah i think you have a question yes please angel may i see the code before we wrote the model okay sige uh, ang code natin lm lang okay. so ang question na uh, angel ito this one. A summary, ito lang yun, summary. Before we wrote the model, are you referring to this one? Yung LM? Okay, sige. Thank you. Okay, uh, question lang please. Pareho ba ito ng level ng discussion sa... Okay, sige. Thank you, Angel. Uh, Doon sa yung naunan yung mga stat. I hope the same lang class. Same lang ba? But of course, iba siya in the sense that R ang ginagamit natin. Feedback please, class. I want to know if uh, these things are quite new to you as far as the uh, discussion is concerned. Similar, okay, good. How about the rest? Similar lang ba? Wala. Okay. All right. So let's go here, class. Ito, uh, as we said, these are the individual tests. Diba? Individual tests of our coefficients. Ito naman, this is what we call the overall <clears throat> overall test of significance. Okay, so this one, this part of our output is called your overall test of significance. Bucket overall. Okay, take a look at this. So, meron tayong degrees of freedom dito. Uh, dalawang degrees of freedom. 1 and 524. Okay. Let, let's just uh, recall. Ano yung D1 class? Ano yung degree of freedom 1? Ano yung degree of freedom 2? Anyone? Kung same lang yan, sige nga, dapat masasagot niya na. Same discussion lang pala. Sige. Uh, let me see. Margaret, please, what's D1 and D2? I expect you to be able to answer that. Kasi, uh, same discussion lang to, review lang to. Margaret, please. Yes, sir. What's D1, what's, D, what's D2 here? Degrees of freedom po. Yeah, why? Ano, ano to? Ano yung degree of freedom 1 natin? Ano yung degree of freedom 2? I'm not sure, sir. Akala ko same lang. Same lang yung degree ng ano. Ng... Na-discuss yan ba talaga yan? Kasi I, I need your feedback, guys. Kasi it will dip... your feedback will be uh, will uh, will be used by me in in how I how I discuss this. Kasi kung ganun din ka-deep dati, then dapat we will just brush, uh, gloss over this. How about the rest, guys? Feedback. Ano ba? Uh, kasi kailangan ko ba ang i-discuss to? O, kasi same lang naman yung degree ng level, so dapat alam nyo na to. Pakifeedback nga, please, class. So that I know how to address, how, how to tackle this uh, discussion here. Hello, class. Uh, Carlos, what's not clear for you? Sir, the degree of freedom part, I don't really... Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. I just don't hmm. get the residual uh, standard. Uh, but, be, but before I answer that, tinatanong ko nga kung ano yung... <clears throat> your previous thought, kung ganito ba rin yung discussion? Kasi ang answer nyo, yes, ganun din naman. Ganun yung lalim. So... Uh, I, I was thinking na hindi ko na i-discuss ng mga to kasi uh, anyway, na-discussion naman yan so parang you should be able to review that on your own so uh, ano guys, uh, honest feedback lang kung hindi ba ganun kalalim yung discussion nyo dati or diniscuss nyo rin talaga to maka nakalimutan nyo lang kasi dapat pag ganyan na-discuss na malalim din dapat automatic ka ganyan degree of freedom 1, degree of freedom 2 Parang 
I think we just need a little bit of a review because it's familiar, but I don't completely remember it. Okay, kung review lang class, so ano ba? Ah, hindi ko na idi discuss yan, ah. so ah uh, take time na lang to review no yung notes yun dante ha. Kasi madami pa tayong idi discuss no. Okay, so I'll just quickly gloss over that. Yung one jan ibig sabihin that that's for your intercept. Okay, one that's for your intercept. Tapos yung 524 dyan, that's your n minus k minus 1. Okay? n is your number of observations. Your k is number of predictors. And your 1 is your slope. Your intercept, I mean. So 526 minus k, which is 1. Kasi isa lang naman yung predictor natin. And then minus 1, which is the degree of freedom lost for your intercept. No? So 5... N minus K minus 1. N minus K minus 1. N is your number of observations. K is your predictors. 1 takes into account the degree of freedom loss for your intercept. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So that, that's as far as I go, class. No? So that's why you have this degree of freedom 1 is for your intercept. This degree of freedom to 524 is for your n minus k minus 1. Okay? So, uh, quickly, quickly, what does this multiple r squared mean? Ano ibig sabihin ng tong 16.48? Ano ibig sabihin tong 16.32? Anyone, please? So, review na lang. Review. Okay. Sige, magtatawag ako, ha? Okay. Uh, Shello? What's the yes, meaning sir. of 16.48 and what's the meaning of 16.32? Mm -hmm. Hold on, sir. Huwag titingin sa internet, ha? Stock mm -hmm. knowledge. Naalala mo ba o alam mo? Be honest. Be honest. Uh, uh, you, uh, you, will sir. Not, you will not be penalized for not knowing, guys. But remember, we want honesty here. Kasi mm -hmm. importante nga sa akin yung feedback kasi that will tell me how to address the discussion. Kung sinabi nyo alam nyo na dati, then I'll just gloss over it. Kung hindi, then mm -hmm. hindi discuss ko. Kaya nga importante sa akin yung feedback class. Okay, you will not be penalized for not knowing. Hindi eh, nyo naman kasalanan nyo kung hindi na-discuss ng ganyang kadetali last time yun. But you will uh, have to give me feedback class. Yun ang importante sa akin. Okay po, sir. Actually, for hmm. some of the econ students po, sir, that was taught po kasi using Stata. Uh -oh. And so, sinasabi lang po yung location niya na dito po makikita yung R squared but not really okay. deep into the discussion, sir, okay. na ano po yung purpose niya. Sige. Thank you. Thank you, Shelo. That's important for me. Okay. So, multiple R squared, no? Uh, although, I, I would like to say that whether state, I have time na pala, no? Can I have just have this last, ano, last minute? Whether it's theta or r, it will generate the same r squared. No? So you have two r squared here. We'll discuss this in greater detail now next time. You have multiple r squared and adjusted r squared. What's important for us is the adjusted r squared. No? And the meaning of this 16.32 is that yung variance natin, yung variability ng dependent variable natin, which is hourly wage, okay? that our model, this one, can explain 16.32% of the variance, of the variability of our, of our dependent variable, hourly wage. Okay, so ibig sabihin, 16% lang ang kaya niyang i-explain. Yung model natin, using education as a parameter to describe hourly wage, can only explain 16.32%. Ano nangyari dun sa 83.68%? Hindi niya kaya. Ibig sabihin nun, Maybe other variables can explain that, can add on to this ano, adjusted R screen. Okay, so it's already time. Let me stop there, class. So next meeting, itutuloy natin to. Okay. Uh, uh, let, allow me, class, to post also the recording of the other section. Kasi umabot kami dito sa, sa residuals. So hindi natin inabot. Na. So pakitin na lang yung last portion para at least uh, alam nyo kung ano ginawa na, namin. No? We looked at model 1. Okay, we look in greater detail at model 1. Ito, no? So, pakitin na yung last portion nun, yung video na yun na ipopost ko. Kasi pinag-aralan namin ito. No? There, there, are, there are things here that we need, we need to know. And 
knowing them, we will better appreciate kung ano yung ano, kung ano yung uh, power ng LM function ni AR. Okay? All right. So thank you so much, class. And uh, for those of you who were not here during the uh, attendance, okay, remain na lang. Thank you, and I'll see you next. Uh, ano, Monday class. May ano tayo, ah, may quiz tayo, ah, face to face tayo, no? Okay, sige. Thank you.